What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another Summoner's War 2 video. Alright everyone, today we're going to do something completely different. We are going to showcase the team that I used to get to 4,000 trophies. Now my team hasn't changed much since the past, and I know I showcased this team a few times already. But Jean has been absolutely OP. I think I can honestly say that Jean carried me from 3,500 cups to 4,000 cups. Because I hit a wall at around 34 to 3,500 cups. Trophies, when I say cups, I mean trophies. And when I had Lapis in slot 8, I just wasn't able to break that 3600 area. The highest I would get would be 3600, and then I would lose a bunch, win a bunch, and I was just never able to break that wall of 3600 cups. And when I put Gene in slot 8, that all changed, and I was able to go on massive win streaks 10 wins, 15 wins, 20 wins. So she absolutely carried me to 4000 cups. Now, I know a lot of you guys say Gene is old, you know about her, I get it. But here today, I really want to showcase how good she is because I honestly think that she can carry anybody from 3,000 cups to 4,000 cups. And now I'm going to see if she can bring me from 4,000 cups to 5,000 cups and so forth and so forth. But today, I want to watch the replays of my last couple fights with you guys. A lot of people will say that putting Jean in the back line is basically just spamming her at the end. And it's really more than that because if you make one wrong play or you mess something up, you can absolutely lose these fights. It is not just as easy as putting Jean or Lapis in your back line and then just spamming them. Counterattacks really are everything in this game. And if you mess up one counter, like I did with Kamun a few times, by either going too early or going too late, Kamun would hit me and he would basically put up the heal block and then I wouldn't be able to do anything if I missed the stun. So countering really is important. So that is definitely something to keep in your mind no matter who is in your back line or in your slot 8. Especially if it's a close call at the end and you have 2 units left and they have 2 units left, you really have to pay attention to your counters because they can really make or break the fight or be the deciding factor on who wins or loses that fight. So I definitely wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Now let's pull up some of these replays here. I wanna make sure we're doing the ones that got me to 4,000 cups. This was the blessing of water. So let's keep going down here. Hopefully I didn't reset them all. Okay, so here they are. We have ranked battle. This was the match right here that brought me to 4,000 cups. And this loss is because the direct counter to Gene is single target damage dealers. A lot of people say that Jean is really hard to counter. She is to an extent, but Kali and Sophia absolutely counter Jean 100%. Sophia and Kali do so much damage that they could basically one-shot Jean. So running a team like this with Jean in the back line and then Kali and Sophia behind her really makes this a tough team to beat with Jean in your back line, let me tell you, because Sophia will basically destroy your Jean along with Kali. So for example, if Kali goes, ignores defense, basically one-shots Jean, then Sophia goes in for the final kill, or vice versa. It seems that Kali and Sophia are a direct counter to Jean. So if you're having problems with Jean teams and you can't beat them, just throw Kali or Sophia in your back line next to your Jean or your Lapis, whatever it is, and it will be much easier for you to counter these Jeans. I can promise you that. So let's go to the top here. Let's start with the last one that got us to 4,000 cups, and that is this one here. And we're gonna watch this replay and I'm gonna go over it with you guys. I know we never did content like this before, but I figured it's something we would try here today. Let me know in the comments if you guys like it. Maybe I can watch Mega Shields replays or some of the top players glue. I can watch their replays and we can go over them here. Now at the start of these fights, what I'm trying to do is get my Perna off two times in a row. The way my team is built, I want to use Perna early on as much as possible. I want to get up at least two sets of burns. Then after that, I want to move on to Beretta. I want to spam him as much as possible. And then after that, I'll usually go in towards the back line. And that's when I start spamming my Lapis and my Gene, depending on where I am in the fights. I normally like to use my Lapis first and then go into my Jean, but if I notice my Lapis is almost dead or dying, I will go straight into Jean, this way she can heal Lapis, then even if Lapis dies, she'll heal Beretta or Soha, and keeping two units at the end is actually clutch, because what happens is if they have a Jean left and just a Jean, or if they have Jean in another unit, their Jean won't be able to stun your Jean or whoever's in your slot 8, that character next to your Jean will protect her, this way you don't have to worry about her taking a stun, and then it'll be much easier for you to take out their gene or stun whatever damage dealers they're using, whether it's Kali or Sophia, if you have a unit paired with gene. This is why I like to have Soha in the back line with my gene. This way, if they're using Lapis, Soha can strip the Lapis of the shield, give the shield to my whole team or my whole back line, and then that makes my gene even stronger. So watching the fight here, you can see I'm spamming as much dots as possible. He doesn't have a cleanser on the team, so I'm going even heavier on the dots. Now, I know he has some type of cleanse, whether it's a spell card, Something like that that gives him buffs or cleanse. But honestly, that is not going to be enough here for the team that I'm using because I'm able to spam so many dots between my spell spoil, my Beretta, and my Perna. I am not worried about him having one cleanse. When I don't see a cleanser on the team, I get really happy. 
because I know my team can be overwhelming when it comes to dots. So I just sat here and spammed as many dots as I could early on. And then the second I get into my back line, which is Lapis, Soha, and Jean, I absolutely love my back line right now because the three of them have solo potential. So no matter what the enemy is running, whether it's Jean, Lapis, Soha, Kali, Sophia, I know that my team or my back line can solo their back line. For example, this instance right here, he's using Lapis. So I go in with the Jean, I try to stun. I miss the stun, which is fine. But now I go in with my Soha and I strip the shield, which basically wins me this fight. Now, if I would have missed that counter or messed up that counter, I would have lost this fight. The Lapis would have hit me, she would have got a shield, and then I wouldn't have been able to do anything back. But because I countered perfectly, my Soha was able to strip the shield, which put it on my Soha and my Jean, and that guaranteed me the victory. And this is why I say counters are so important because if I would have messed up that counter, the whole match would have been over and I would have lost and I would not have made it to 4,000 trophies. Now for this one, we have Desert Queen, Kali, and Sophia. This team here is a direct counter to Jean. That's what he's trying to do here with this team. He's got no dots on his team. He's got AoE damage from Camilla and then he's got Sophia and Kali for single target damage. So his deck is a really good strategy if used properly. And I'm not saying he didn't use it properly. I'm just saying if you use a deck similar to this, it could work really well if you're perfect with your counters. Now, the issue with this game is there's a lot of lag going on right now. Counters get messed up, and a team like this could be really hard to pull off. If you are dealing with a lot of lag, I wouldn't recommend using a team like this. But if you're not dealing with lag, a team like this could actually be really good for you. So let's get in here and watch the replay and see how this goes. Royd is a really underrated frontline tank. He is really good. He has the defense down. In some cases, he might even be better than Ramagos if he's higher level with his gemstone. I have been wrecked by a frontline Royd. And if you guys take notice in this fight here, this Royd lasts all the way to the end. Now, he is level 12 and my cards are only level 9. And I think I have one level 10, which is my Soha. Other than that, all my cards are level 8 and level 9. So him having a level 12 Royd, and this should also show you guys, if you have high level cards, so let's say you have a Ramagos that's level 8, but then you have a Royd that's level 12 going on level 13. You're better off using the Royd because he's going to give you so much more tank value. And he's going to be able to take a lot more damage than your level 7 or 8 Golem or Ramagos, whatever it is. This is a perfect example for you guys to use what you summon or what you have leveled up. It will work better for you than using the current meta, as they say. So just using the Golem because he's meta might not be the best for you. If you have a Royd that's level 12 or another tank that's just higher level then the golem because yes the golem is the best frontline tank in the game but if you have a level 12 roid he is definitely going to do better than a level 8 golem is going to do for you now if you watch this fight here we are getting completely wrecked and what this fight comes down to is me not getting nervous here i was live on twitch when we were doing this fight and i thought 100 percent i was going to lose this fight but instead of throwing the towel in i just kept spamming dots i am literally just going in there with beretta Perna as much as I could before he died. And then after that, I am just going with Beretta over and over again. The one advantage that you have when only having four cards is that you will be able to play those four cards over and over again. So being that I have Lapis in slot five now, she is able to take the damage before they get to my Beretta. So I am able to just spam my Beretta while Lapis takes all the damage. And then Soha will take all the damage after that. And it allows me to just keep spamming my Beretta over and over again and getting up as much dots as I can. Now you can see we are not in good shape here. I used the transfer because I had no other choice there. There was nothing else left for me to do. Now he is countering me perfectly here with the Desert Queen, which is sleeping me. Sleep countering. But I am relentless with the dots from Beretta. I just keep going with the dots as much as I can. Now that he's up to my Beretta, I'm going to switch over to my Jean. She's sleeping at the moment. But the second she was on sleeping, I would have switched from my Beretta to my Jean. And then I would have kept attacking with the Jean to keep my Beretta healed. So this way all the damage would have stayed on my Beretta. And the massive pure amount of dots, he just could not keep up with it. Even having the Pony left, there was just too many dots. His team just fell towards the end. Even though my Jean was slept, his team still fell down at the end because I just put up so many dots. You have to be relentless with whatever team you're using. If you're using single target damage like Sophia or Kali, just be relentless with it. Keep spamming the Kali or the Sophia, whatever damage dealer you're using. If you're using Dots, Perna, and Beretta, spam them as much as possible. Don't worry about anything else on your team. The rest of your team is there if you need it. Ramagos is just a meat shield. Don't worry about using his skill. If you have the opportunity to use your Dots or your Perna or whatever damage dealer it is, that's what you want to be using and spamming over and over again. And that is going to collect you victories. 
that along with lining your counters up properly you will easily be able to get the 4,000 cups just like me the video is not too long yet so we can do one more here real quick I purposely didn't do any battles since I got to 4,000 cups so I can show you guys these three fights that got me to 4,000 trophies but a lot of people are using Harpy now because she's so good. He's using a level 10 Harpy, a level 10 Kamoon, and everything else on his team is level 9. Bernard is level 8, but he doesn't matter. He's only there for the speed buff. And for me, if I have Bernard on my team, I only use him for the first two turns, and then I just use him as a meat shield after that. I don't try to spam him. And the one thing you guys can definitely take away from this is I am only winning these because I am literally spamming my Perna and my Breda. I don't want to say I'm only winning them, but I'm winning them because I'm staying consistent with my team. My team is a dot team. So I put up dots at any cost, no matter what I have to do. I don't worry about using my Remagoss. I don't worry about using my Pony. The only way I use them is if I absolutely have to. Let's say, for example, I put up a ton of dots on the enemy, and then he transfers them over to me, and I don't have my transfer up or a cleanse. I'll use my Pony to cleanse the dots. And that goes for anything on my team. Same thing with Soha. I won't use her unless he has a Wusa. Then I'll use my Soha to strip his Wusa. But other than that, the only cards I am playing is my Beretta, my Perna, my spoil transfer and then once they get into my back line it'll be my gene at the end because she has a clutch stun and the heal and it just makes gene such a strong unit in this game i honestly think eventually they're gonna nerf gene because of how strong she is stun heal with the counter is just so broken in this game and i'm sure a lot of you guys are starting to realize this after you saw my last video with gene being the current meta now i know lapis was the meta at one point but to be honest gene is so much more meta now because she's actually three times better than Lapis when it really comes down to it. Yes, Lapis can solo a whole backline, but if your enemy is using a team like mine and it has Soha and Jean, it's going to be really hard for that Lapis to solo that team because Soha is a direct counter to Lapis and Jean is also a direct counter to Lapis. Jean will stun Lapis and Soha will steal the shield. So if you have them both like I do, it just makes your backline so strong and so annoying to deal with. Because even once they get through the front line like this team here, and I'm sure you guys are seeing that all of these matches we are doing, they are getting to my back line every single time. And it looks like we're going to lose all of these matches. But because of how strong my back line is, and the fact that once I get to my back line, I'm able to spam all four of these units as much as I want, makes my back line super strong. And most of the time, I'll be able to solo their entire team, even their front line units like you see here in the match before. They have all these frontline units left, but it doesn't matter because my team is so strong with only four units because it allows me to just keep spamming all four of them, Breda, Lapis, Jean, into Soha, and it's so hard for the enemy to keep up with it. Yes, he has more units, but at that point, it doesn't matter because every unit in my backline plays such a strong role in my team that every time I play one of these units, it's just doing so much damage to the enemy or throwing the enemy off that much more and then they're not able to counter me as clutch as they would if my front line was still alive most of the time i feel like my team is stronger with just my back line without their front line my front line to me is just a bunch of meat shields and then i use perna to put up the burns on the first two turns and if i can't use the burns early on i usually don't even worry about it i just go straight into beretta now yes beretta is just spam that's all you do if you're using beretta you just keep spamming him over and over again but when it comes down to your so hot and your gene it's not just spamming you really have to pay attention and make sure you're counterproductive because if you mess up your counters or you don't counter properly you're gonna end up losing the fight most of the time now i know this just looks like a bunch of spam but i promise you there is a method to my man that's just like here i was able to spam my beretta because he couldn't get through my soha fast enough so i just kept spamming my beretta to get up as many dots as possible and now i'll go into gene i'll protect my beretta with the invincibility which will make him have to hit my beretta and then i'm able to stun him with my gene as much as i want so for example, this match right here, I can use my Gene whenever I want because I can stun him. And even if he tries to take a turn, he's just going to hit my Beretta and it's not going to affect my Gene. And that allows me to use the Gene as much as I want and allows me to stun his Kamun and his Gene. So I think we showcased the team pretty well here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. You guys know I love to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know what team you're using. Let me know where your cups are. I love to hear what you guys have to say. I'll be starting the sub celebration this week. So thank you guys so much for 3,000 subs. If you want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, those are always linked down below. We do two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. If you want to be a part of the random giveaway that we do here on YouTube, all you have to do is sub to the channel, like and comment on my past 10 videos, and that will automatically enter you into the random giveaway. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.